love back with Pat's two cents. Sit your behind down now. That's right. I'm telling you what to do. Because you are eager. You're like eager beaver. When, 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 how, how, who, I'm ready. I'm ready. Sit your behind down. You ain't ready to do diddly squat, but pick up your pen and your notebook and take notes and learn. Read, pray, listen, shut your mouth and don't know so much. Do you realize that the most intelligent people will tell you in a New York minute, the more they learn, the more they become acquainted with the fact that they don't know. They're, they're like, I didn't know I didn't know all that. But the more you learn, the more you realize how much further you got to go. Now, the reason I say that, sit your behind down, some of you, you get saved, you're ready to roll. You're a Lord, use me to the glory of God. I want to get out there and do mighty exploits for you. Your biggest exploit is number one, living a holy life. You got to learn that. That doesn't just come boop like that. No magic wand. That's why you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's called the process. I know I hated it too. Nobody likes the process. Listen, l listen to this. Thank you, Lord. I forgot about that. <clears throat> what happened with Jesus? When Jesus was baptized, he came out of that water filled with the Holy Ghost, right? What happened next? Did he go out doing exploits? Nope. Nope. He went through what we call the wilderness journey, the wilderness experience, the hell of wilderness. That's part of life. And God uses life to wilderness your behind and mine. If Jesus had to go 40 days in the wilderness, no food, no drink, no nothing, if he had to go 40 days in the wilderness to prepare him for his ministry, and you think you've been saved a year, or you've been saved six months, or you've been saved a month, and you're ready to get out there and kick some devil butt, you better sit your behind down before you get off into something you can't handle because you're not equipped. Time. God uses time to equip. Lessons are learned in time cleansing purification of your nasty attitude and my nasty attitude and your emotional hang-ups and my emotional hang-ups it takes a scrubbing process do you hear me you can't take a dirty t-shirt stick it in the washing machine and put it on quick cycle and put it out. No, it's not going to be clean. It's going to be grungy. You got to take that bad boy, put it on the soak cycle, pour some bleach in there with the soap, and let it sit. Now, because it's sitting there doesn't mean you're never going to use it again. It's dirty, and it needs to be cleaned, and it needs time. The process, the chemical process needs to take place. God is using process. He is processing your behind and processing mine. We're all at different levels. We're all at different stages. But don't despise the chastening of the Lord. And don't despise small beginnings. Your change is coming. That's why the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, Romans 12, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing, by the renewing, by the renewing, by the renewing. Pop, pop. Yeah, it takes time. That brain of yours, that little pea brain up here, between those two ears, need it needs time to be renewed. And the renewing is a process that takes time. Sit your behind down. You better rake it in now. Because when God's ready to use you, and you've been too busy out there being busy, and he says, where's your hammer? Where are your, your nails? Do you know how to drive a screwdriver? Do you know how to work a forklift? Do you know? Well, no, I was out there helping the, the advance. You better sit your behind down. You haven't even gone through the basics. See, that's why God warns against a novice thinking they're going to get out there and conquer the world. No. The best, the greatest leaders learn this if you don't remember anything else about your development. The greatest leaders are the greatest followers. When you learn to submit, Shut up, listen, obey, cooperate. When you learn to do that, when you learn self-control, and then you're empowered by the Holy Spirit more and more, the more you obey, the more empowered you are. What ends up happening is when it's time to lead, you lead with humility, you lead with understanding, you lead with patience, you lead with a heart full of love and compassion because you have been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, the whole nine yards, and you know what it's like to have to be in the follower's seat. And you did it with all your might. You follow. You obey, you submit with all your might. Don't half step. You want to be all that for God? Be all that as his student. Start as his disciples. Jesus didn't send the disciples out. He didn't call Peter and all them guys and say, okay, you guys, get out there and conquer the world. No, they spent years with him, learning, watching him, submitting to his lordship and leadership. Becoming students. That's what disciples are. Once you become a disciple, that's why the Bible says, he who is faithful in little things will be ruler over much. Sit your behind down and get with the little stuff that you think is insignificant. They will be mountains of progress in your life if you learn now.